For most of my life, I've been thinking about the cold. We take cold for granted because it's all around us. But even now, one of the biggest problems in the world is caused by not being able to keep things cold. Cold storage issues plaguing global vaccine delivery. Six million kids a year are dying because of lack of access to vaccines. Gaping divide between developed and developing countries and their access to medicines. Around the world, there are millions of people not getting basic vaccinations because of the challenges of the last mile transportation. The devices used can't reliably keep vaccines cold for long enough. And up to 50% of the world's vaccines go to waste. When I heard that, I was shocked and then I thought, there must be a way to solve it. I like to create things and design things. And my ideas always kind of come from problems that I see, and then they give me an idea how to solve it or how to make things better. For me, that's the fun of inventing things. So I grew up in Taiwan. And since I was a kid, I really enjoyed the technology and engineering side of things. But then the school I went to, it was very traditional. And so the teacher would discourage me and they would say that doing science-y things or engineering things is something that the guys do. Even though I was thinking in my head, how could you say that? Did you see you know, how well I did this thing? I think I'm quite stubborn in that sense. If you say, no, don't do this and that, then it would just make me want to do it. <laughs> I chose electronic engineering for university study and then a physics master's degree. Eventually, I went to CERN to build systems to form part of the Large Hadron Collider. In my job, cryogenics, all the systems were kept at minus 270 degrees C, which is close to absolute zero, so super, super cold. So coming out from this cryogenics and cold system background, when I first heard about the challenges of last mile vaccine delivery in general, I started doing more research on my own, trying to understand exactly where the challenge lies. So before injection, vaccines need to be kept at a stable temperature between two and eight degrees Celsius. If they get warmer, they can get spoiled. The device they use for carrying vaccines the last mile is a traditional cool box. So a box on the lid and then ice packs and they put vaccines in. But then when you open the lid, the rest of the vaccines get exposed to the heat and then eventually vaccines get spoiled even before they arrive. And then all of the effort, plus billions and billions of dollars, has gone to waste. So for me, that was just crazy because at the last mile, it was, it was not, nothing for me, nothing complicated to keep between two and eight. Because for me, two and eight is very warm. So I decided that I'm going to create a reliable cooling device to deliver these life-saving vaccines to the people who need them. At first, I would just draw it out on a piece of paper, designing the system myself, just finding materials and then building different prototypes. I just kept going and then constant testing and trialing and improvement. And then finally, I had a device that works. It's called Smart Last Mile Vaccine Cooling System. So Smart Last Mile, Smart Mile, Smile. And it's a great name. 
So vaccines are held securely in a rotating cylinder. So when you open the door, it only exposes the vaccine that you're about to use. Everything else stays cold. It has a self-closing door, an insulated backpack to carry it and to keep it cold for longer. The normal cool boxes, when you start doing the opening and closing, will last for one to three hours, whereas Smile lasted for three days. It was even better than I expected it. At that point, we just needed money and investment to get on board, and then Smile could be used in the field. Good afternoon and welcome to Expo Live. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Kitty. Thank you very much. Ooh. Hello, does it work? Okay, thank you very much, Yasmin, and hello everybody for coming to the talk. So globally, the creation of life-saving vaccines is a well-funded area, but not much investment of money or effort has gone into the most critical last mile. We must do something about it, and I invite you to help spread SMILE across the world. Thank you very much. Does anyone in the audience have any questions at the moment? Okay. Um, this is the World Expo. What you do works, yet I don't, I don't see you on CNN being the thing that's saving millions of lives. And I want to know exactly what's stopping you. So we've been speaking to all of the big NGOs who are actually setting out there to help make the world a better place. And they buy the cheapest products rather than who is performing. So have you raised any financing? Uh, all of the finance uh, we've raised are from grants. Uh, grants. So, yes. Okay, so, so you don't have a first customer. It sounds like the most necessary thing is to get your first customer commitment. Just get one. Other things will come. Hello. 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 Do you like to know what we do? Hello. Would you like to understand a bit more? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think I'm a good salesperson. So this is a vaccine cooling system. First, we have a self-closing door. Self-closing door. So Telling different people the same thing again and again, and then just always get rejected. It's just not a great feeling. Is this something that uh, could be part of your maybe, like solution? Maybe if you I'm someone who loves creating and solving problems, and that's what I'm good at. Whereas to sell something, it is a, just a completely different kind of skill. Do you have a distribution here? No, we're looking for people, so yeah. yeah. I've been trying to sell it to the biggest organizations, but we don't have the funding for mass production. So they always said, we can't order anything from you. But then when it comes to investors, they would say, Oh, where are your buyers? Have they given you orders? So at the moment, we're kind of stuck. Hmm. I started it because it's my personal passion. I wanted to make a difference, but I think it was last month, I got a text from my bank saying I have overdraft. This is... Okay. It went to below zero on my bank account, and I don't really have more money to survive to continue doing this. And even though I know this is the right thing to do, it's just bloody difficult. <laughs> that really led to me thinking, OK, I could continue applying for grants, doing more R&D, but what is the point when However hard I tried, it was just not going to go anywhere. So when I heard about MIT Solve, 
I thought, okay, this is the last time I'm going to apply for funding. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Solve at MIT. You're all here today because you are committed to using technology and innovation in service of solving the world's most intractable challenges. Okay, are you able to all hear me all right? Okay, great. So, the purpose of SMILE is to first, cooling problem, second one, human error. I've been invited by MIT Solve to serve as a judge, reviewing different innovations in the pandemic and health section of it. Now the next step is to bring this to the field, to actually impact and help these people. But the Kitty's innovation immediately resonated with me because of what it's trying to solve for. This quality of medicines issue, this last mile issue, is an intractable one. It has been for years and decades. And she's trying to solve it in a way that is innovative, and I just think she can have a major impact on society. I think you're really onto something. Now we just have to figure out how, how, to, yes. how to move it from yeah. your vision to, yeah. to, re that's, to reality. Yeah? Yes, that's the hard bit. <laughs> that's, that's the hard bit. In the UK. Getting to know Jeff was just incredible because I could feel his confidence in this project and that's very important to me. When I saw your application, Kitty, I got really excited because I've been trying to work on the same exact problem. But the challenge that you have now is there's a technical side of what you're trying to solve for and there's an economic side. Where Kitty is, is she's in a place what we call the valley of death, meaning she has a good idea that has sound basis that, you know, by theory can save lives, but it's that business case that is lacking for the moment. We know generating evidence and having champions talk about that evidence will be critical. That will make those stakeholders that you have been frustrated by look and say, wait a minute, this is something that not only is interesting and addresses an intractable problem, but it has evidence behind it. I'm trying to help her make some connections to people that might be able to invest in her and to start building that evidence base so SMILE can be adopted and to be able to scale it. She needs credible institutions, individuals to say yes. Nice meeting you, Craig. Thank, uh, thank you, Kitty. Nice to meet you as well. So, so Kitty, right now, there's a number of countries where we're working on delivering COVID-19 vaccines in remote, difficult to reach areas. And we've seen what you've seen, right? There's cold boxes. They're left open way too long. They're open way too many times. So I love the idea of a compartmentalized unit that only opens what you need when you need it and keeps the rest cold. Just recently, Jeff made an introduction and the UPS Healthcare reached out to me. He just said they're really excited to trial SMILE and then it just felt like, really? Really? So, Kitty, I'm thinking maybe one way that we could move forward faster is just to take the two units that you have, the prototypes, and put those in the field in an active project in that we would be able to gather data required by the big pharma, where we can say, look, we measured the temperature of these vaccines and we know it was exactly within this range within these, this time, which I think is really valuable for you as you then go to the next phase, which is to say, I know it works and the data proves out that it works. Now I'm ready to go get the investors needed to make a number of units and then you can start selling them. Donc voilà, euh, je vous présente Kitty, la personne qui a contribué ce fort de vaccin. Ça, on est en train de mesurer la température de Dango, on ne veut pas oublier. So I'm here in Cameroon. Parce que ça s'est fait mais automatique. Oui. We're working with the UPS Foundation and the Ministry of Health to bring Smile on the last mile vaccine delivery trips. Ça c'est le, le nouvel euh, vaccin. Et... So we are going to travel hundreds of miles through the heat to remote villages. 
and gather the official data to prove that Smile outperforms the cool boxes they currently use. The stakes are very high because there is no money left. So at the end of this trial, if there is no one backing this project up, this will all end. During this time, we want to get to know the health workers who bring the vaccines to hear how they feel about the devices. Je suis Monsieur Atangana Ebene Oze. Je suis personnel de santé. Le plus grand travail aussi que nous faisons, non seulement que nous amenons les vaccins, mais les difficultés sont énormes dans mon travail. D'abord, éloigné et c'est une zone d'accès difficile. L'autre difficulté, c'est le porte-vaccin. Ça ne garde pas la température des vaccins à une longue durée. Et également, un peu de secousse, ça se casse, ça décourage. Donc, ce n'est pas facile. La vaccination est plus importante au Cameroun parce que on a beaucoup de difficultés pour en bonne santé. Les hôpitaux sont d'abord loin. Ça rend la difficulté que les docteurs puissent venir là où nous sommes pour venir. Ma fille a été victime du paludisme. Elle est morte. Elle est morte. It's been so long since I get back to why this was created. But seeing the last mile here in Cameroon and then seeing how difficult people's lives are because of this problem, that reminds me why I started all this. Because this thing is going to help. It is definitely going to help. <laughs> La première fois que j'ai vu apparaître Smile, j'ai dit « Waouh !» Enfin, ils ont pensé à nous. Nous qui travaillons dans des zones reculées, ça conserve la température et c'est tellement sécurisé. Même si vous tombez, les vaccins ne vont plus se casser. Je ne peux que dire « Merci pour cet appareil ». S'il était déjà disponible, je commencerai à l'utiliser. Ça nous soulagerait. As for the thermal test results, so far, most of their cool boxes, it would be fine for a few hours. But for Smile, it was able to last for three to four days. So that's pretty cool. But for me, being able to see my idea being used by people and that they said they really like it and it's something that is usable and it's working. For me, that's just amazing. It's been so long that I have tried everything I could in this project and even with all of my frustration and struggle for the last few years. During this trip, I felt that there is hope in changing things for the better. Kitty. Ooh, hello, Craig. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. So, Kitty, I, I looked at the data, and it's really exciting, right? I mean, the SMILE solution is giving four days at two to eight Celsius when traditional vaccine carrying cases are only doing four hours for that same time. So, 
It's an amazing result. Plus, what I really thought was cool was one of the quotes that said, this looks like it was designed by someone who's done this work before. That stood out to me because that means you're also having the users be happy with it. It was just incredible hearing it from them. So that was just so cool. Um... So Kitty, I'm extremely impressed with what you've done. What's exciting for me is at scale, this solution will save lives. And that to me is a game changer. Oh, thank you so much, Craig. There's always ups and downs in this entrepreneurial journey. And I do think it's for everyone. You have to be weird in a way. <laughs> you know, inventing something is one thing. Anyone can have an idea, but to stick to it, to make it happen, for me, that's my dream come true.